check. One, two, three. The D. Three. Three. Yeah. This is the D. Three. Go. Your guide to Detroit. Your guide to Detroit's arts oh. and entertainment scene. This is the D. Three. Welcome to the debrief for the week of July 30th, 2018. I am your co-host. My name is Seth Ressler. I'm Becky Scarcello. It's Chad. Good to be back. And if this is the first time that you've checked out the podcast, this is a podcast that's for Detroiters, uh, whether you're in the city or whether you're out in Metro Detroit or looking to go out and enjoy the city. Exactly. All the arts and entertainment, basically everything that's happening. We talk if you want to keep up, podcast. if you want to know what's hot and good to do. Where are your people to come to? I like to think of us as the cure for FOMO. Uh, And on today's episode, we have some very special guests. We've got Mark Loeb, who is the designer and organizer of the Belle Isle Art Fest, which is coming up here. Uh, Also, friend of the show, movie man Greg Russell is going to talk to us about some of the big films that are coming out. He just got back from Paris. He was hanging out with Tom Cruise. Mm. Tough life. Yeah. I know. Really? Boo-hoo. I saw some video footage. They're about the same height. There. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That must be nice for Tom. Uh, Also, uh, on Thursday, we've got our special in-depth interview with musician, songwriter, and record producer Luis Resto. This is the guy who uh, was on stage accepting the Oscar because he was the co-writer of Lose Yourself, the Eminem song. And he got it from Barbara Streisand. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, oh, he didn't get it for the Eminem song. No, he got it from Barbara Streisand. Oh, we got it she from handed it. To, yes, Barbara Streisand. Mm-hmm. She's uh, Barbara Streisand. That's a little weird for Barbara Streisand to hand out. A, yeah, a, a, an Eminem. The whole situation was funny. He'll tell us about it. Look forward right. to that. So we'll hear the story. Uh, by the way, if you want to know everything that's going on in the city, we have an email list that you can join. We will send you links to everything we talk about in this show because we talk about a lot of stuff in this show. Go to thedebriefdetroit.com. Sign up for the email. All right. Let's get into it. We're going to cover all the Detroit concerts, comedy plays, food, drink, and more coming up. The D. 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 The D. Bring. Food and drink. Food and drink seems like a good place to start. Let's do that, Becky. Why not? Yeah. So I love when we tell listeners about something that's going to happen, and then we get to say, yep, it happened, and it's, it's <laughs> open. <laughs> we were correct. Yes. <laughs> we're not like those weather guys on TV. We always get it right. We do. Real news. Hashtag. <laughs> so the Royal Oak Speakeasy Johnny's opened last Saturday. That's the one that's near Mr. B's on Main Street. So it's a hidden space. You have to go through a back staircase to get to it, which is only accessible from an outside kitchen door that looks like a walk-in cooler. (laughs) So that opened... like I said, over the weekend, and you can get cocktails and small plates. It seats about 42 people. And it's fun. If you go on their website, uh, johnnysroyaloak.com, just go do it. You'll, you, you'll be uh, you'll be and surprised. you know it's a speakeasy in Royal Oak because not only can you not find the restaurant, you can't find parking. Ha-ha, it's true. That is it's true. true. It would be funnier if it wasn't true. We're talking to you, Mr. Mayor. Mm-hmm. So Anchor Bar, I don't know if you guys have been. It's like a Detroit institution I heard it's a big deal, but I haven't been. Enlighten us. So it's being sold. This is something that's been in um, a family for many, many years, nearly 60 years, in fact, Mm -hmm. same family. This is a place that used to be one of those few to grab a great lunch. So I worked downtown in the early 90s right out of college, and I probably went there at least once a week for lunch because there was only a small handful of options. Just dripping with history, all kinds of cool stories and photos on the wall and you know, great burgers and that sort of thing. So they're selling it for an uh, undisclosed amount to um, Zaid Elia, who owns Park and 220 Merrill in okay. Birmingham. Yeah. So he said, though, he wants to preserve the history and he wants to keep it. That's what they all say. I don't know. That's so what they all say. Actions speak louder than words. We will report back. But he says, I just want to change it a little. Just fix out the worn out stuff. Keep some menu items. Maybe add some twists. But uh, this Six was, more layers on top I, of it. I'm, I'm an optimist where you're Condos. a cynic here, Seth. I, I, I'm an optimist because you're going to sell it to somebody who knows, who's in the area and has properties in the area, knows a lot about it. If you have to sell it, sell it to somebody who at least there's a chance that he'll keep most of the history. Well, I hope so. And the, the current owner, well soon to not be the owner, Von um, Dadarian. He's 71, and he's a real storyteller and a real character. So he says he's going to be back. He's going to hang out and still tell his stories. Very cool. You know, he's welcome. So uh, back in the day, and I think still now, there's, you know, everybody from journalists to police to Red Wings fans, they all kind of congregate there. So I hope it keeps its flavor. Okay, so there's a Bob Seger-themed bar that just opened up called Catmandu (laughs) in Unionville this past weekend. Um, 
If you don't know where Unionville is, it's a small town in Michigan's Thumb area. Seth, you know the hand thing, right? You've been I, I here do. That enough. was one of the first things I learned when I came to Michigan. Do you even do it when you're talking to other people? I did. I actually did this. Uh, we were in Philadelphia for the Podcast Movement Conference, and I yeah. met a woman who is working with a Native American tribe uh, over in the western half of the state. And you know, she immediately put up her hand, and I, you know, I said, "Okay, show me okay, where, where it is." Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. so the owner, his name is Dennis Colon. Uh, he just has a big affinity for uh, Bob C. He's been a fan for a long time. In 1967, he actually played pool with Bob Seger when he was in town with his band at the time. It was called The Last Herd, put on a concert at the American Legion Hall there in Unionville. Mm-hmm. So at that time, Dennis was a junior in high school. So he has no idea if Bob Seger remembers this or anything, but he and his daughter, with his daughter's encouragement, has opened up this bar. The name of the bar is a Play on the 1975 Seger song, Katmandu, with the K A T M A. N D U. Right. But the bar is cat C A T man M A N D O. <laughs> and that is a take on Dennis's nickname. His name is Cat. His nickname uh, is Cat. Okay. So it's all full circle. All the food on the menu is Bab Seeger themed. You can get a silver silver bullet burger, for instance. <laughs> um so Seeger got word of this. I guess they have some kind of friend of a friend of a friend sort of thing. And he said, yep, I'm definitely going to be coming and visiting the bar. I don't so. want to be a hater, but I kind of feel like this guy. You know on Married with Children where Al Bundy would always talk about scoring four touchdowns in a single game? I feel like this guy, this one time I played pool with Bob Seger. He probably tells that to everybody he's met. And isn't, yeah, man, but you know, he played pool with Bob Seger 50 years ago. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But I mean, you can look at it another way. You know, maybe he was ready for a new career. And hey, I've always thought about this. This is a fun story. Maybe people will like I it. I love how your glass is half full. I'm worried that if this podcast takes off, somebody from my high school is going to open up a bar and name it after me. Oh, see? Yeah. yeah, Because I I guess there's no legal (laughs) issue with this. What would the bar named after you be called? Just Uh, Seth's? I, I don't How about know. it'd be like a wrestling it. team? Seth. Seth Wrestler, get it? Oh, now you're thinking. It could be like the no, Nacho come on, Libre. Come on. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I will let you in on a secret. I should not tell you this. this well, is, now you've already well, now this you back. To. This is going to come back to bite me in the ass. Uh, if you go to my middle school yearbook, yes, uh, I do have a nickname in there. It was a nickname that uh, my camp counselor in fifth grade gave me, and I sort of adopted and stuck with after that. Uh, Stud Muffin was the nickname. No joke. <laughs> um, <laughs> no well, joke. then, obviously a bakery. Right. There you go. It'll be a bakery. It'll be, be called Stud Muffins. Stud Muffins. <laughs> Seth Rustler Bakery. Wow. All right. How do you follow that, Becky? <laughs> Talk about s- something else. <laughs> Verner's has been a hot topic on our podcast many times. So there's new cans of Verner's with Michigan lighthouses on them. Can we get a case and send them to Aaron Foley? We really should. Yes, we, we should. really should. He's a big fan. So so limited release, there's seven different designs with lighthouses, including like the oldest lighthouse in Michigan. All, they're all significant. It's a partnership with Pure Michigan. So they started being available today. To, uh, today's Monday when we're, we're recording this. They're sold in 12 packs uh, throughout Michigan stores. So check that out. You can get them till October. Coming up in just a bit, Comerica and Little Caesars are now sensory inclusive. We will tell you what that means. Action. This is the deep brief. On the screen. All right, Becky Jag, we are going to check in with one of our favorite guests. He comes on and he tells us about movies because he frankly knows a lot more about Jag than movies. Well, every, <laughs> everybody knows a lot more about Jag about movies. I guess that's not. I that haven't hard. seen. I haven't seen many. No. <laughs> Uh, Greg Russell, the movie guy, uh, here in Detroit. Uh, you can find him all over. He's on Live on the D uh, on Channel 4. He's got uh, Movie Show Plus. Check your local listings for that. Uh, and he's got the Greg Russell movie show. He's got his own podcast. I know. That's not I, bad. Yeah. Everybody's getting in the game. They are. They're seeing they what know they're what's doing. Up. They're like, we can get a piece of We this. are trailblazers. Mm-hmm. It, These it three really can do it. Anybody can do it. The future. <laughs> Greg Russell, how are you? Thanks for joining us. I am us. doing I am doing well. And yes, you guys were my inspiration about wanting to do a podcast. I still remember the first time I was on with you, and I had so much fun. It was like, wow. It's it's much better than radio, it's isn't it? It's easier, fun. right? It's easy. You yeah. don't have to get up early in the morning. <laughs> do whatever you want. Right. So, right. Well, welcome back. I know you just got back from Paris, right? 
Oui, oui, yes. I was there in Paris with Tom Cruise and the rest of the folks that kind of went from a Paris accent to something else. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Tom can't, Cruise can't and keep that the up. whole cast from the new Mission Impossible movie called Fallout, which uh, if you haven't seen it yet, and you like, and if you like action, you're gonna love this movie. It Great. Looks I mean, good. this is truly the most powerful one out of the entire series. What and made, you know how all the rest have been, so that's saying a lot. Greg, what made this one head and shoulders above all the other ones? I've been reading that everywhere that this was like way better than the previous ones in the series. I think it's because well, one, I mean, true enough, they did this with all the others, but it's action starting right out of the shoot. Mm-hmm. I mean, as soon as the opening titles are done you know after the song dun 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 mm-hmm. then it just goes uh two scenes in particular which you probably heard about there's a fight scene with tom cruise and henry cavill and i think uh simon Pegg was in this particular scene as well in a bathroom and now huh. of course you know yeah. as, as filmmakers that there have to be edits you know somewhere but the way they put this thing together it just seems seamless it did not seem like the camera stopped, and they just went. And then there's another one at the end with uh, Tom Cruise uh, and Henry Cavill in a helicopter. And, you know, really, for those two scenes alone, uh, that's worth the price of admission. I love that. I love those. Uh, what They call those a like one right? Uh, there was one a, shot. Right. One yeah, shot. There was an episode of The West Wing where they did it, where they followed the entire cast oh, uh, yeah. down through a basement. And, you know, and the whole thing is, like, spot on. I love scenes like that and how much of how much of uh his own stunts is tom cruise still doing i mean he's like 70 now isn't he oh, stop. <laughs> jack okay right. so greg tom cruise shares my birthday oh but not the year he's only eight years older than me though so no he's not okay. 70 jack but he's eight years older than you so he's 30 exactly right. yes there you go exactly <laughs> so uh yeah he's he's still doing his own stunts wow. and the other thing it, it, when you see this movie You'll see him at times, you know, kind of limping a little bit. He broke his ankle at the start of filming, you know, doing one of the stunts. Really? Yeah, jumping, I think, from one building to another. So, you know, they kind of worked it into the script, you know, just a little bit. Because, you know, after Mm -hmm. you get beat up that much, even if it is a movie, you've got to, like, limp or something or another. But all the other cast members, because I brought it up to them, like Henry Cavill, of course, he's Superman. Right. But he said that, you know, they, they offered all of them the opportunity that if there were certain stunts, if you want a stunt person to do it, which we understand, sure. you know, you can get somebody to do it. But their deal is we're looking at, I think Tom is what, 56? They said we're yeah. looking at 56-year-old Tom Cruise out here doing all this stuff. And, you know, the rest of them are, say, like in their maybe 30s, possibly early 40s or something like that. And they're going, no, nah, we're, we're going to do it. Right. They, said they, they didn't care. It's like, no, we can't let this happen. We can't lose you know, face to, here. So Angela Bassett's right. doing her own stunts too then? Is that like, yep. <laughs> it's just everybody's I mean, everything I've read about Tom Cruise is that he's the ultimate alpha male. So that actually makes sense to me. He's like, I'm the man, I'm going to do this. Like, he's just got that type A kind of, I'm going to go all in on this. Right. And then, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys, oh, I haven't posted the whole thing. I'll have to post it and let you guys see. Rebecca Ferguson, who's in the movie, uh, I absolutely adore her. Uh, interviewed her several times. And we have a very funny red carpet interview. Uh, I will send it to you guys. If you want, you can post it. But it, it, once you see it, you'll understand what I mean about it being funny. Awesome. Okay. So let's talk about another film that uh, I know you've seen, Mile 22. This is a, a new film with Mark Wahlberg. That's right, our favorite Detroiter, the one and only Mark Wahlberg. He's like me. He's and born in Boston and an adopted Detroiter. He's yeah. just like you, That's Jay. right. Completely. Just, That's right. We, we, have, we have the same physique in everything. When I see you, I think, oh my, was it's, that Mark Wahlberg? It's hard to tell them apart. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> right. They both like burgers. <laughs> and he's another one. I mean, I, I know he's not as old as uh, Tom Cruise. I think Mark's what mid 40s something like that yeah but here's another guy who is out there doing this action all through the movie where again the rest of the cast members of his film said the same thing it's like yeah we may have been in our 20s but we see him out there you know busting his butt jumping from car to car and doing all this stuff we've got to do our own we're not going to let somebody else do it but it's it's an interesting movie and for anybody out there who thought that this was the sequel to eight mile no (laughs) 
<laughs> that's I, like up in Chesterfield, isn't it? About yeah. that. And that's way up in the burbs. Eminem rap for me. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's all about he is in charge of this kind of like special forces group. And they have to move what they call the package, which is a guy who's got, you know, information, of course, that's pertinent to not having the world blow up. Right. Uh, they've got to take him from one place to another. And it's 22 miles. The trip itself on a normal day would have just taken 38 minutes because they even say that. But, of course, you know, who wants to go to a movie that's only going to last 38 minutes and you get the package there safely? So this is, you know, just all about the people who are trying to attack them and different things like that. And it's one of those films where I, I have I even told Peter Berg, who's the director, I gave him credit because there is a twist that comes that. It's it's really good, really for the simple fact you don't see it. It's something that you will not expect because, you know, after certain parts in any movie, you kind of already know, OK, guaranteed it's going to end this way. This is going to happen. But no, this one has something going on that, uh, yeah, you're really not going to see. If it's a twist that Greg Russell, who's seen every movie ever, didn't see coming, I'm intrigued. Me too. Yeah. Uh, we, let me ask. Say, we should have a movie afternoon. We of, oh, of just like movies with twists. I would do that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. That, could, that could be the. I'd love that. What I'd if love for us all to go to a movie together? Yeah, oh, that'd be fun. Well, that be Jay, fun. you haven't seen a lot of movies, so I gotta know. Do you know the spoiler? Like, do you know what happens in the Sixth Sense? Nope. <gasps> really? Oh my god! Really? really? Never seen it. Wow! But you've oh, made it all this time wow. without You're knowing. How is that? Do you know who Luke Skywalker's father is? He, the guy with the mask, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wow! Oh boy! Wow! This is that was great. That, Rick Moranis, right? It was Rick Moranis. <laughs> oh, the space balls. Okay, yeah. Uh, let me ask about the co-stars in this because these are some hardcore co-stars in this uh, Mile Twenty Two movie. You've got Ronda Rousey and uh, the Indonesian act- action hero uh, Aiko Uwe uh, in right. this film. Right. He Aiko. I mean, he's another one. I, I mentioned to him. There's a scene where he's got one arm or one wrist. Um, handcuffed to like a desk or a table and 14 guys come in and he winds up being the only one standing at the end. Do they come at him ninja style one on one and he takes him one at a time is that how he's able to do it? Right. I mean you know and then also he's like he would kick Seth and then turn around and kick me and you know just so quick. Wow. But oh yeah he is dynamic and Rhonda she's actually this is like the second or third time I've interviewed her and she actually she's a sweet person but probably like any other boxer or fighter who's been in the game they've always kind of got that game face on Mm -hmm. so you kind of look at her and think I better ask her a good question (laughs) yeah (laughs) resting angry face resting fighter face I went in to talk to her and then Lauren is the other uh, lady in the film who's also a bad butt uh, you know fighter in the thing and I told him remember growing up they used to always tease guys about, oh, you fight like a girl. And I told them, I said, after seeing this movie, I wish I could fight exactly. like a girl. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like the women in Black Panther as well. Like that's a right. high compliment. Right. All right. Well, we might go see this because we like Mike Wahlberg. He's a Detroit fan. We do like him. So, oh, yeah. Gave him a Detroit shirt while I was there. And a uh, story, yeah, I'd just like to share because a lot of times you always hear like, you know, sometimes bad stories or whatever about a celebrity if somebody tries to do something nice. But this was really cool. Uh, a friend of mine has a company called Detroit Life. And so I gave Mark a Detroit Life shirt during the interview. So he held it up and, you know, oh, man, this is really nice. And, you know, he laid it down because, of course, you know, We've got to do the interview. And so a lot of times when, you know, celebrities are given gifts, sometimes they do keep them. Sometimes they give them like to their managers. A lot of times they're actually even left in the hotel room because they're not thinking about it. You know, we're interviewing the first thing in the morning. By the end of the day, they don't remember, you know, who they are, let alone anything else. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I was out in front of the hotel waiting for a ride uh, to go uh, to another location. And I hear somebody go, Greg, Greg. And I look up and it's Mark Wahlberg and he's holding the T-shirt in front of him. That's you know, cool. Uh, awesome. So I fried, baby. And I'm like going, wow. So that's why I know, Becky, you said you saw the picture. Yes. I ran over and was like, can I take a picture with you holding my shirt? That was a good <laughs> and catch. And you guys look great in it. Yeah. Greg, I'd imagine over the years you've talked to Mark about his love for Detroit, right? Oh, yes, for sure. I mean, been interviewing him. Wow. I couldn't even tell you. I, I'd be willing Since to say the, the first funky bunch. I interviewed him for, he wasn't even the star. So okay, that goes yeah. to show how long ago that must have been. Wow. But yeah, he loves Detroit because, you know, it reminds him, as he says, you know, of Boston. 
It's mm-hmm. also a deal. You know, he likes the people here. And he's one of those guys who he told me, he said, I never believed all the hype, you know, back in the day. Oh, my God, you go to Detroit and something's going to happen to you immediately when you get there. And he's like, eh, he said that happens anywhere, you know, for sure. But, you know, he said after we would come here, uh, he just loved the place. And that's just like another guy, uh, Dwayne Johnson, The Rock. He had been coming here, of course, ever since, you know, he had started uh, wrestling. Right. Because the first time I interviewed him, it was so cool. He's going, oh, man, we need to go down to Fish Bones. I'm in the mood for some of their seafood gumbo. And I'm like, yes. oh, you <laughs> I the love menu. that. My man. So, uh, I yeah, mean, and Mark. Uh, oh, go ahead. I will say, having lived in a couple of different cities, including Boston and Detroit, the one thing that these two cities share, and, and you can speak to this, too, is that they both have that sort of blue collar chip, chip on, on their shoulder, shoulder yeah. us against the world right. ethos Rough to them. and tumble. Yeah. yeah. And I always say this, Greg, when I, you know, I moved from Boston to Detroit for my radio career and I always felt welcomed here and always felt at home here for big sports, the different seasons. When I went down to New Orleans, which is a city that a lot of people love, I never felt as at home being a Bostonian as I did in Detroit. In New Orleans, like, oh, you're a Yankee. I said, please don't call me a Yankee. I like the Red Sox oh and the Tigers. God. Right, but, especially right. from there. Jeez. <laughs> but but, but I, I just felt a kindred spirit with everybody here in Detroit because of the similarities to Boston, like Seth's alluding to, like you're saying, Mark Wahlberg has talked about. This. There are, there's a lot of similarities between those two cities. Right. Nope, you're, you're absolutely right. And yeah, he loves it. He's opening up, I think, his fifth Wahlburgers basically here in the area. Well, As had, we all know, there's the one downtown in Greektown. And then Taylor, we should all meet right? there one day for lunch. Oh, yeah. Yes. And then Taylor. And one in Flint. I think that might be the one he's getting ready to open up. And there's uh, going to be one on Woodward in 13 Mile. Is right, really? right, right, yeah. right. Jeez, that's a lot. That's yep. not far from uh, from where w- you and I live. Exactly, yeah. in between the two of us. Pop in there and get the Dorchester burger. Yeah. All right, one last that's movie good. that we want to uh, ask you about, which is, uh, we all watched the trailer for it before we started the podcast tonight, and I don't know about you guys, it freaked me out, yeah. which is uh, Searching. Well, and it really freaked me out because I have teenagers, right. and that's <laughs> this whole premise of the teenage daughter is lost. And This is the new John Cho movie. Talk to us a little bit about this one. Well, it, it's a modern day thriller, and look for that on the poster. Because when I said it during the interview, both John and Deborah Messing separately went, "We like that. Can we steal that?" Sure, go ahead. It's one of those where you know, I brought up to them uh, a child being kidnapped or taken away has been the premise in movies pretty much since the beginning of movies. Right. You know, even going back to the silent era. But this one goes to show how we do things differently now. You know, back in the old days, it would have been the police, they would have put up, you know, the flyers like on the uh, telephone poles, had bloodhounds, gotten the whole group of people, you know, walking through fields, doing all this other stuff. He goes searching for his daughter, as well as the people who are helping him, the police as well, via the internet. I mean, they are on like Google website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and that's what they use to track. And like I told them, it was so weird because there was one scene where he gets up in the morning and he has like five windows open on his computer. And, you know, like I said, one was Google and I like said Instagram and like the newspaper of their city, blah, blah, blah. And I'm looking going, this is what my this is what I do every morning. This is what my computer looks like. Holy smoke. Yeah. And it, it is. It's just so amazing how, you know, with today's technology, you know, you it. it it's still hard maybe to find somebody who, you know, somebody doesn't want you to find, but you've now got so many avenues where, where was the last hit they had, you know, right. like on their cell phone? Where was this? Where was that? And we even talked about, uh, with John, remember the movie Enemy of the State with Will Smith and Gene Hackman from mm-hmm. like 20 years ago? Yeah. Yes. You remember how that one had at that time, all these super technology. And I watched that one last week and you're looking at, you know, the stuff they had and it's like, Oh, my God, Uh, why don't you just rub two sticks together and start a fire? (laughs) (laughs) Right. Well, what struck me with this um, trailer, too, is how much you can fake in terms of online stuff. You know, uh, your Facebook friends aren't really maybe people you see on a daily basis. You know, how he's digging into the life he thought his daughter was leading is might not necessarily the truth. Right. Right. Because, I mean, we've, we've all got that. You know, if we, we still have Facebook, there's sometimes you go through and, you know, somebody will like something. You're going, who is this? Right. Yep. You know, who is this person who I just, you know, 
probably back, you know, when you first started out, you were just happy that people wanted to be your friend. Oh, right. yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> because of that, I have started tightening my circle over the years, you know, and, and unfriending more and more people. And I always do oh, it. Yeah. I always do it on their birthday because that's when the announcement comes up. And it's, it's so-and-so's birthday. And it's like, oh. I don't actually like that Happy person. Happy birthday. I'm unfriending you. <laughs> I haven't You're talked to that person in 15 person. years. So that's I'm your kidding. benchmark. Yes. Would I wish them happy birthday? If I wouldn't wish them happy birthday, they got to go. You know what my benchmark is? If I right, saw them right, in the grocery right. store, would, would, would I, I walk up to them and start a conversation? Oh. And if the answer is no, I unfriend them on their birthday. Don't worry, Greg. We still will always be friends with yeah, you. Yeah, yes. So I would, uh, I'd ask, I'd talk to you over produce anytime. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you. And you guys too. Love you guys. It's always great. All right. Uh, well, Greg Russell, people can find you. Uh, you do it another wine and recline. This is the event that you do over at Imagine Theater in uh, Royal Oak. What's the next film coming up? The next film. And thanks to you guys. And a couple of other friends, it's going to be The Big Chill with that great Motown soundtrack. Uh, so I, and I've seen this a long time ago. There's a Michigan connection to this film? All the oh, right. characters Morris went to U of M. Who, right, who wrote and directed it, went there. And all the people in the movie, I mean, they're all, you know, Michigan grads. So that was kind of cool. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny when you hear, um, I think it's Kevin Klein, you know, say the word Wolverine. Where it's like, okay, we can tell that you're reading that part off the script because nobody says it the way he says it in the movie. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, it's it's a you know fun movie. It was kind of like the movie that kicked off the yuppie movement back <laughs> yeah. in the day. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Because so. they were all the cool people, you know, in their early 30s, all had nice jobs. I mean, men and women, all professionals, and so yeah, that was back when. Oh, I want to be cool. I got to wear the yellow power tie and the blue shirt and the pinstripe suit. And, uh, yep, there we go. All right. Sounds like a good one to, we'll, to do wine and recline to. We'll come check that out. Uh, also, of course, people can catch you on Live on the D uh, on Channel 4. And uh, like we mentioned before, Movie Show Plus, that's uh, syndicated. Check your listings for that. And uh, you've got a podcast, Greg Russell Movie yeah. Show. Always a fun time. And thank you, as always, for having me. Thanks, Greg. Thanks, Greg. We appreciate you stopping in. Bye, Greg. The deep breathe. The deep breathe. Sports report. All right, Jack, I'm going to warn you right now. I was so good at sports last week that uh, Seth, you might be. Hey. I, I listened <laughs> to it. You know what? He was so good that he was making up his own twists on things. Mm. Like when he got the like, Michigan basketball coach's name wrong? He's like, I'm not going to go with Mr. Beeline. There's, I'm a, just there's a basketball change coach? It up. Yeah, his name, F, he listened last week when I was not here to do sports and set these two straight. Seth referred to John Beeline as John Balin, at which point I almost drove off the road listening to it. It was just, it. he, yeah. like, we want to put our own stamp on things that's what he chose to sorry john yeah. mm -hmm. you are flailing like crazy right <laughs> yeah. now Becky. okay here's the real sports report now that i'm back uh big story in sports this week was last night sunday uh two iconic tigers and becky you grew up here so we know you're not a sports but you know the names mm -hmm. alan trammell and jack morris oh absolutely i, th I think it's alan trammell <laughs> <laughs> Don't start. Don't start with me, boy. All right. Uh, they, Alan Trammell and Jack Morris are, of course, members of the 1984 World Championship Tigers team. That was the Bless You Boys era. Yep, that's, if you hear yeah. They sneeze a lot? Just forget Can you it. kill his mic? Just, I know. Just kill, just kill it. Just kill medium. your own mic over there. So, um... Of course, this was the big, uh, famous team that won the championship, and these two guys, longtime Tigers, drafted by the Tigers, came up through the organization, and very cool, they went into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, That's together great. on Sunday. Tons of Tigers fans there. Also there... Sweet Lou Whitaker, one of their teammates. Lou Whitaker, the second baseman. Alan Chamberlain, the shortstop. They were the double play combination for years and years and years. So yeah, now the hope, the hope is that Lou Whitaker will come in next now that this 1984 team starting to get its due, deservedly so, going into the Hall of Fame. So mm -hmm. good for them. And in case you're wondering, Tigers, if you're a night owl, if you work second shift, uh, they got their big West Coast road trip coming up in the next week or so. They'll be at Oakland and then at the LA Angels. So the games will start at 10 o'clock. If you're up late, you can watch some Tigers baseball. Moving on to the Lions. Training camp official kicking into gear. They've got the pads on. They're really getting after it. And kind of the story out of camp, and I want to get your guys' opinion on this, is I was talking to somebody over the weekend about this. This whole, like, the media doesn't have the free reign and free access they used to under mm -hmm. previous regimes of the Lions. So the backstory is the new Lions GM has been there a couple of years, Bob Quinn, and, of course, the new coach, Matt Patricia, both came from the Patriots. And the Patriots kind of have this way of they don't talk to the media much. They kind of do their own thing. They don't let them in very much. And they've adopted this opinion with the Lions. And the media people are saying, well, you can't do that to us because you're not, you're not good. You haven't won Super Bowls like 
the Patriots have, like, you can't take away our access. And to me, I'm thinking, who cares? Yeah. Beside these whiny media people that want their access to stuff, if the team is doing well, the average fan is not going to care. If they're winning games, there's still going to be butts in seats. All you need is a Twitter account and a caps lock to get to the people. That's it. Just see our you president. Just, you just bypass the media. Right. That's exactly. the way it works. That's the way it works nowadays. Well, you know, and a lot of people just, you know, rightly so, don't trust a lot of the media now anyways. So maybe they just don't want to hear it. Very cool story coming uh, out of downtown in our wonderful arenas downtown. Wait a minute. Do we decide against the media? <laughs> well, not us. You know, not, not us. Okay, let's move on to I'm something concerned we can all agree a little bit about okay. that. <laughs> Fake news. Okay, so. We're the real, real media. <laughs> We're the real news. <laughs> right. All right. Uh, <laughs> Beeline? <laughs> yes, you got it, finally. Comerica Bayline. and Little it's Caesars Bayline. are... <laughs> Can I get to this next story? Yes, please, because this is a good story. Yes, Comerica and Little Caesars Arena are now what they call sensory inclusive. They are the first arenas in their respective sports to get this designation. Comerica, the first baseball stadium, and Little Caesars, the first uh, combination basketball hockey arena. So it's a certification of a company called Culture City. That's culture with a K. Um if you have uh, somebody that comes to the game that is on the autism spectrum, if they have any kind of other sensory issues, it mm-hmm. is now friendly to those folks. Uh, what they do is they can give you a sensory bag, and in the bag, noise-canceling headphones, fidget tools, verbal cue cards, uh, weighted lap pads. Some people on the autism spectrum have a, a thing where they have some, have some yeah. sort of weight on their lap. Yeah. Um, so if they're, if they're so uncomfortable, if there's an issue going on, there are these uh, tools that you can use. Mm-hmm. And for anyone at the arena, if it becomes too overwhelming, the lights, the sounds, whether it's a concert or a basketball game or hockey game, there are sensory areas where it's quiet and not all the visual stimulation. And you can kind of go to calm down and, and, and take a breath. So a really cool thing and something that we wouldn't have thought of 10, even five years no. ago, but it's now y- inclusive. You know what this actually reminds me of? And, and, you know, obviously I don't know what it's like to to be afflicted with autism or be on that scale, but uh, we've talked a little bit before about how I got run over by a car at one point. I, right. I, I, I had a very bad concussion. Mm-hmm. And when you're coming out of that, I remember the very first time my brother-in-law took me out to a restaurant that with, with other people around. And it was... Sensory overload? Yes. It was inc- it was incredibly overwhelming. and Just the sights and sounds? Just the, I mean, even just the car ride stuff? over there. No, not not like noise pollution, but it was just, it was just a lot. There yeah, was just a lot, a to, take lot in. to take in. And it was actually several months, uh, or, you know, or weeks at least, uh, before that sort of normalized. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I can appreciate something like this. Because yeah, years ago, you would just nice. you would just very insensitively say, well, if the kids get a problem, leave them at leave, home. Yeah. But, or, or, you know, or, yeah, leave the arena or don't even come in the first place. But right. now that this uh, amazing, amazing building that is so state-of-the-art and beautiful, brand new, that now even more people will get to experience it. I love it. Yeah, and is this this is the first in the country? First, uh, first in their respective sports. So first NBA, NHL uh, arena with LCA, and then uh-huh. of course first Major League Ballpark uh, with Comerica to get the certification. I think that's really cool that Detroit's the first for that. Yeah, very a uh, front runner with this type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and finally, another good news story: the Muckfest MS. It's the Fun Mud Run. It benefits uh, the Multiple Sclerosis Society. It is uh, this Saturday at Willow Metro Park in New Boston. That's just south of the airport. Um, if these mud runs that that are just you'll just get down dirty and just and throw caution to the wind and have fun. You get your race bib, your shirt, your beverage of choice, whether that's beer or or, sure. or, 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 or pop. They've got like the the obstacles, like the big balls and the crash landing where you just splash into the mud. It's a great cause, and uh, ticket prices actually do go up on August first if you want to get in on this. This um, I've seen many videos because we have some friends in in our neighborhood, so. Um they're f- kids that um, my kids go to school with. Mm-hmm. Their father has MS. Really? And, okay. and they get a bunch of friends together, and now they're teenagers and do it every year. And then they make a fun video oh, out of cool. it, set to music. And they just, they have a blast to get down and dirty. And they raise so much money. And many people are affected by MS and all, um, you know, there's it's a big range of how much help you need. And, and there's still just a lot of money that needs to go towards this to find a cure and treatment. So it's a great cause. If you want all the details we'll put them on the website and sign up for the email list and you'll get that link uh, along with everything else we talk about the debrief detroit.com yeah uh, coming up if you like punk rock there's going to be a panel discussion on it uh coming up right here in detroit this is the debrief about last week 
All right, it's the portion of the show where we take a moment to reflect upon the last week. And before we get too deep into this, we have to brag on our rock star here, uh, Becky, Matrix Human Services. You had a heck of a week, didn't you? Oh, we did. Yeah, thank you for for shouting out. Um, We have a great committee and a lot of people that work on it, so I cannot take much credit at all. But um, Thursday night, we had our big 313 in the D party on the rooftop, 350 Terrace on the... uh, the top of music hall. Mm-hmm. It was a great crowd. We had about 400 people. The weather turned out amazing. It was just these beautiful views of the city with a nice breeze all night. And we raised $70,000. Wow. That's amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, for Matrix Human Services. And so. from having been to one of your breakfast, the work that your organization does is just phenomenal. So yeah. Thank great you. To well, it is really about the clients and, and their ability to overcome some pretty harrowing circumstances with just a little help from us is what keeps me going. And, and most of us involved. So, yeah, shout out. I thank you for everyone coming and contributing and all our sponsors. So, And that wasn't all you did last week, was it? <laughs> it was not. I, guys, you, I you am never, tired. You're never home. <laughs> I am tired. You should be more sunburned. <laughs> oh, no, you got to wear the sunscreen. That's yeah. how I keep my youthful appearance. Um, so I also went to Mopop, which was super fun, um, one of my favorite music festivals. And it was dusty as all get out because we've not had enough rain. So um, that put it, you know. My basement has had enough rain. See, we need to flip. Siphon the water out of your basement and bring it down to the riverfront. Plus, I could use some of those bands in my basement. You could. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Work on that studio. Definitely. So, I mean, love the food. Uh, Had some really great eats. um, Great, like, shopping and all kinds of fun stuff. But, of course, it's about the music. And that part was fantastic. What I love about this festival is I always go knowing several that I want to see and some pretty big names. But then... Almost every band I hear, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, they sound great. So there's two stages that flip back and forth. So you can literally see everybody that's Mm -hmm. there, which is nice. So a couple of new ones that I didn't know much about that I really ended up enjoying was Dermot Kennedy, a singer from Ireland. Okay. And he just kind of started out pretty stripped down with him and his guitar and just a great sound. And the crowd was really getting into that one. Um, Another one that we heard really pleasantly surprised was uh, Turnover, a band named Turnover. So um, the ones we went to see, though, did not disappoint. So Portugal the Man was there. Mm Mm-hmm. They did this really cool thing. They had great graphics for one thing and a wonderful light show. Yep. But they sort of wove in and out of their own songs with little bits of covers of classic rock songs. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they had some Stones in there, Metallica, um, uh, Black Sabbath, Pink Floyd. So so you'd be like, oh, oh, what are they playing now? Oh, that's Led Zeppelin. You know, and then they would they would go into their songs. And one of the group that I was with said, you know, what's really cool about that is they're doing this for this live experience and for the crowd and because they love music and they love to play because they could never record that and like air it or use it for promotion because of the licensing of all those songs. That's true, so, yeah. So it really felt like what, you know, what we always talk about, like live, there's nothing like live. You know, you go and, and you're, you win this unique experience and sharing it with everybody that's with you. Probably my favorite show there was St. Vincent because she's just like an awesome rocker chick and she just totally brought it and she had this super cool outfit and really great graphics and a video screen too and just sounded amazing. Uh, Brockhampton was there. The National closed out the show. It was a great time. I saw on Instagram, you posted this, you wound up with a uh, friend of the show there. Yeah, so <laughs> wandered in and saw Gary Graff outside of the media tent. So uh, first of all, I'm like, oh my gosh, I am in the same place and with the same credentials <laughs> as Gary Graff, You're apparently. welcome. He's the uh, music writer for the Oakland Press. We've had him on the show a couple of times. Yes. He put together the Detroit Music Awards. He's one of the guys behind exactly. that Exactly. He's well. written a book on Bruce Springsteen. I mean, he knows lots and lots and lots about music. So, so. I ran into him. It wasn't last week. I, I think it was the week before. Uh, I ran into him at a party. Um, my boss, you know, my day job is that we work with radio stations all over the country. Yeah, so Fred Jacobs. And so my boss, Fred Jacobs, who was the program director of WRIF here back in like the late 70s, early 80s. I think he was the third program director they ever had on that station. Uh, and then he went into radio consulting and he works with radio stations all over I the mean, country. I mean, the man basically invented the classic rock he format. He did. You he, never he know did. talking to him yes. such a humble guy, but he is a big deal. He, he mm-hmm. is, and he's gone on to do a lot of other really cool things, and uh, I mean, even these days, he's working on podcasting and the connected car and smart speakers and all this cool stuff. Well, he, uh, he was, he's about to get inducted into the Radio Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Oh, that's awesome. And Well-deserved. Well, he's the first 
radio consultant to ever get wow. inducted. Wow. You know, I mean, you look at the names in there, it's guys like Ronald Reagan, right? It's guys like Howard Stern. I mean, it's guys like uh, Wolfman Jack. The I mean, A-list. It's, yeah. Right. It, it's an amazing yeah, company list to of, be in. of people that are in there. And so, uh, you know, our company threw a party for them. Uh, and it was like a who's who of folks from from Riff, from oh, cool. WRIF, from over the years. Uh, uh, Ken Calvert was there. Oh, sure. uh, Arthur Penhollow was there. Uh, and frankly, I don't, because I haven't lived in here my whole life, I, I, there were a lot of pe- guys that I didn't necessarily know. Gary right. Graff was there. Uh, at one point, I start talking to a guy, and... I can kind of tell by the way he's dressed that he's in a band, <laughs> and yes. I'm not sure what band he's in. Okay. And then at one point we started talking about a podcast. He's like, "Oh yeah, I was on, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody from Trains podcast the other day." <laughs> I'm like, "Who? Who am I talking to?" Uh, it was Jonathan Cain of Journey. Did you have to ask him? Or no, did you, oh. I, I was too embarrassed. I didn't yeah. find out till I till came it, back here oh, afterwards. You didn't know the whole and time looked we were him talking. online. I, I did not know the whole time that, he was in town for a show. Yeah, they just played up. with. Uh, Def Leppard yeah, yeah. From America yeah <laughs> up to the party that oh, is a cool. Seinfeld oh, moment that, you right. had a Seinfeld moment yeah. like, I can't ask who this guy right. is I oh. can't no it was yeah so it, it was well that's what's cool to just talk to people and like oh my gosh I, I feel like I can talk music you know on a somewhat decent level you but, absolutely can but, yeah. then, but then I'm talking to Gary Graff I'm like so you know what do you say he's met them all done it all written about them all so yeah. it's fun so how was your week Jag well while you guys are hanging out with all the rock stars I got an up close and personal look at uh Michigan's no fault insurance laws. I got into a little bit of a fender bender. Oh, What'd wah, you do? Wah. So I was uh, coming down Eleven Mile, uh, right by South, right by Southfield. I was coming west, and you know, right there where the off ramp comes from Six Ninety Six, and cars come oh, flying sure. off that off ramp. That's an awful yeah. spot. So I'm on Eleven Mile, and. Um, this guy in like a a, a Dodge, uh, what's the fast car? The um, Charger. The neon. Char- <laughs> yes, the Neon. Charger. A, yeah, it was a Charger or a Challenger or something. Yeah. And he comes bombing off 696, and he spooked the girl that was in front of me. So she stopped short so she wouldn't hit him. Oh. And when I saw him fly by, I looked to the side to go see him. And in the time it took my eyes off the girl in front of me, she stopped. She stopped. I looked up, and I was practically in her trunk. So oh. I rear-ended her. Um, Darn. For, my airbag went off. That's never happened before, so that was a little bit of a surprise. You okay? Yeah, I mean, I I think I instinctually put my arms up, so the airbag hit my forearms and not my face, face. fortunately. Um, she was able to drive away. Uh, cop came, got the report and everything. Lathrop Village cop who was who was great. He was really wonderful. Um, and then so she was able to drive away. Had a you know, but my car, the grill had caved in and everything. Um, had it towed over to the dealership, and the guy that he was, oh, they're not going to total that. This is the grill, the hood, replace those parts. Well, no, no they total it. Oh, they, yeah. they total it because yeah. the insurance company doesn't want to deal with it. No, they don't want to deal with a rental car for it. a month while you're while you're getting it fixed. They totaled the whole thing out. And so I was thinking about it. I'm like, boy, everybody here complains about you know, no fault and how Michigan has the mm-hmm. highest car insurance rates in the country. So I did some digging. Okay. And you've seen as you go downtown, every highway has these billboards for we need driver's choice dot yeah. com. I moved from I was basically up on fourteen mile, now mm-hmm. I'm down on ten mile and right. my car insurance went up by fifty percent. I'm not even in the city limit at this point. Fifty percent. And yes. Yes, my car insurance went up that much. So everybody complains about it, and every politician running for governor Says is talking they're gonna about. Gonna, we're going to fix it. Yeah. So here's I did. So here's the why. Everybody complains, but not everybody knows the why. Mm-hmm. So Michigan has mandated unlimited personal injury coverage. So if somebody is hurt in a catastrophic incident, like like your your situation, yeah. Seth, it, it, there's no limit on that. Other states, it's like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand. There's no limit. Well, here's where it would have been a good thing for me because of my injury. Uh, I was only able to collect up to the amount of my policy. And had I had a no limit policy, I actually would have you collected have, quite, You would have been seven figures probably. Quite, I would not be here doing a podcast with you. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh, well, that would be sad, but okay. <laughs> so the, so the, uh, not when he's Scrooge McDuck diving into right, his pile yes, of gold, yes. you know. So, but, you know, uh, so next time I get run over, I'm going to do it here in Michigan. Do it here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now we're friends. Right. Hey. 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 Right, hey. Yes. hey, maybe you should run me over. I could, yeah. <laughs> I am not hearing this conversation. <laughs> so qu- quick, very quickly, a couple other factors that go into the car insurance. So uh, all the lawyers, every city has them, but I mean here, you see all oh, the guys, all the lawyers on TV. Yeah, yeah. billboards Jumana. and TV and everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, since 2007, no-fault lawsuits have gone up 130%. 
Um, and here, here is the ridiculous part. So you, if you've ever, ever been in a car accident, we've had to deal with the insurance. Yes. Yeah, okay. So there's the medical, what's covered by the medical, what's covered by your auto insurance. They always want to take the auto insurance first because there is no, like, if you have a procedure done, there's a contract to rate with your health insurance. But if it's through your auto insurance, there is no set limit on what they can charge. And this, again, this is from the um, we, need dri- we need drivers choice.com website. It's run by a group called Detroiters for Change. This is according to their website. If you have an MRI for a medical reason, mm-hmm. the cost is generally on average $450, which seems, okay, yeah, reasonable. It's reasonable. Want to guess how much that costs if it's billed through auto insurance? Like triple. Oh, way more than that. $3,259. Wow. For the same procedure. For the exact same how procedure. How can they even do that? How, do, how is that even possible? It's like a racket. That's, that's so terrible. And because it's tied to health insurance, if you're a senior citizen and you're on Medicare, you have to pay a surcharge because of that, too. I so mean, the system, uh, the system is broken. so foobar mm-hmm. that uh, that it has to change, and hopefully whoever wins, governor, Democrat, get Republican, or otherwise, can get this fixed. Because th- as this city and state comes back, and we're so excited about it, that is one of the issues we really need to fix. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, while we're working on that, the Belle Isle Art Fair is coming to town. <laughs> we will tell you about all the details. This is the D D D D. Concert calendar. Becky, let's get into the music. Who's coming to town? All right. Wednesday, August 1st, Arctic Monkeys at Masonic Temple. Thursday, August 2nd, Charlie Puth and Haley Steinfeld at DTE. Friday, August 3rd, uh, Dedalus to Mission. It's a space opera at Ant Hall. Okay. So, yeah, this sounds really intriguing. A sci-fi-inspired rock fantasy that begs the question, when does artificial intelligence stop being artificial? I can't do that, Hal. <laughs> so it's gen- not yet, obviously. <laughs> not yet. Genre spanning songs. There's rock, reggae, opera, electronica, hip hop, all going into. They this do rock a lot fantasy. of cool stuff over at Ann Hall really and Hamtramck. Do. Yeah, that's a venue really we're checking do. out. Also on Friday, August third, Boys to Men at the MGM Grand. Uh, Saturday, August fourth. Oh my gosh, so much stuff. So, Detroit All-Star Garage Rock Punk Review at the Tangent Gallery Hastings Street Ballroom, which is a really cool space, by the way. What's going on there? Pretty raw. This is the third year of this. So, it's new bands plus some old favorites from the whole Detroit garage rock and punk music scenes. So, there's some reuniting. um, The Motor Dolls, the Algebra Mothers, and then some new ones, uh, White Shag, the Flipsters, and a few more. Plus, there's a vendor market with Michigan goods, as well as like old concert photos and posters from rock history. Now, we're going to talk to uh, Luis Resto on Thursday. Yes, and he's actually playing yeah, that he, night. He's with the Algebra Mothers, right? Exactly. Yeah. He'll be on, I think, at 11 p.m. that night. So, but, By the way, he, you know, he's also done work with Eminem, with Don Was, with a number of other people. Talk about so. genre. He won uh, the Oscar. Spanning. for uh, f- he, he co-wrote uh, Lose Yourself. From it's a great Mile, story. And we're so. going to ask him that story. Yeah, you got to listen in on Thursday for his episode. But also on Saturday, uh, all around town, uh, there's a Blues, Brews, and Brats Festival in South Lyon. Shakira's coming. Yellow Wolf's coming. Black Milk. Chem and India RE. Uh, Sunday, August 5th, the Smashing Pumpkins at LCA. Monday, August 6th, Pusha T at St. Andrew's Hall. Tuesday, August 7th, you can catch Dashboard Confessional, Playboy Cardi, Collective Soul, Three Doors Down, all around town. Have I told you the first time I ever saw a Dashboard Confessional? I was working in radio no. in Boston, mm-hmm. and uh, a record rep from Vagrant Records, a friend of mine, said, I want you to come out to Worcester to see this band. It was like an a hour Tuesday west, yeah. night. Yeah, yeah, you know what it's like far out. To, to go out to Worcester. It'd which, be like asking somebody in Detroit to go to Toledo. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, on a Tuesday night, You're and like, that's eh. not a schlog you want to you want to make, and uh, I don't know why. I must have liked the record rep. I was like, all right, fine, I'll go mm-hmm. uh, to see this band called Dashboard Confessional. And you didn't know who they were. Or anything. Nobody, I, nobody I, I did. thought nobody yeah. did. Yeah. No radio Following airplay, no or... nothing, nothing. Mm-hmm. I show up, place is packed. This has got to be a 2,000 seat theater. Venue. Okay. Packed, wall to wall. And then Chris Caraba starts to sing, and every kid in the audience knew every single word to 
every single song. Really? This is like the Napster yes. days, isn't this it? Was, this is like MySpace, is what I think it was. Oh, is that it was okay, going around on my, and and I, you know, it was kind of the it was the very beginning of that emo movement. Yes. And yeah, it was crazy. I'd never seen it. That's it's so, really ex- cool experience. It's so funny you say Dashboard Confessional and MySpace. CNN does this uh, special, these decade specials. We were watching this last night on the 2000s. Oh, yeah. And they were talking about social media and MySpace. And one of the people they were talking to about was the guy from Dashboard Confessional. Yeah. Oh, and I, and I think I, I was the first radio guy that it, the Vagrant uh, uh, rep had ever taken to see him live. Oh, that's super cool. So. So a little, a couple pieces of news. So along with the whole um, punk rock uh, review going on, there's a bunch of punk rock events all um, kind of tied back into that Cranbrook Art Museum show, mm-hmm. Punk Graphics and the Shepherd Ferry show. So there's going to be a Detroit panel discussion about punk rock. It's a free event at Third Man Records in Midtown um, this weekend. So this discussion is all like kind of tied back in. So if you want to talk to people and listen to people that were really here in the heyday of the punk rock movement in Detroit, go check that out at Third Man Records. Eminem, so he's got a clothing line called the E13 brand. So, but he turns the E around, so it kind of mimics so, 313. So it's like E13 instead of 313. Yes, okay. but he turns the E backwards, so it looks like 313. Okay. So he's trying to get a trademark uh, for that. There's a fashion designer in town, Clement Brown, of the 313 shop. If you've ever seen those shirts that are actually a 313, mm-hmm. he's trying to block that request, saying, you know, it's really pretty close to my design. So he's held a trademark on his since 2010. So they're kind of going to see how this works out. Uh, Eminem's fighting back on it. So uh, Clement Brown says, it's not personal, just trying to protect my No, I was reading about this, and he says he really respects Eminem as an artist. It's just a matter of protecting his own intellectual property. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the way, there is a famous Detroiter that just got their TV show renewed. We'll tell you who it is. The D. Breathe. All right, guys, let's talk about the Belle Isle Art Fair. Uh, it is coming up on August 4th and 5th. There's going to be 100 juried artists there. Uh, Who doesn't I, love a good art fair? What I just mean? found out what a juried artist is. I didn't really know. Is that like oh. they get seated and selected by the lawyers, or is that... No. No, no, no. no, no There's no, just no. a committee that selects who gets right. to be... Guilty, not guilty. Yeah, no. and they decide who gets in and who doesn't. And, right. and it's, uh, you know, both the quality, but also making sure that it fits with the theme. And some diversity. Of the women. art show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're trying to basically round out the entire the entire art fair. So anyway, I had an opportunity to sit down with the designer and organizer of the art fair, a guy named Mark Loeb, and I asked him to tell me about the types of art that's going to be at the fair. Painting is probably the primary medium, and of course that includes watercolor, gouache, oils, uh, even goes into the multimedia collage and such like that mixed with paint. Also for wall art, there's photography, a lot of mixed media, prints, things like that. Then we have three-dimensional art, which um, a lot of the functional art would fit into there, like ceramics, and then sculpture, of course. You know, things that you would put on a pedestal or on your fireplace. Oh, and I also, uh, we also have what we would call wearable arts. So we've all been to a show like this before, right? Sure. Where you're just, you spend the day strolling outside, looking at art. Going, See what catches your eye. Mm, that might look good in my living room, you know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. What I really My wife d- tells me, no, we have enough stuff in the house. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, but really what I like about this is they have something there called the Mint Artist Guild. And Mark told me a little bit about what that's all about. My wife and I started an organization called Mint Artist Guild about three years ago because we saw a lot of young artists who didn't really have a clue how to create a career. So the Mint Artist Guild works with teenage artists that already have basic art skills and a promise for a future. So we're not starting at the basics with them. We're starting with how do you take these skills and this passion and turn it into a career path? One of the ways a lot of artists make a living is in the art fairs, so we do work with them to create art and then to sell it at the fairs. One of our artists, for example, uh, sold 80 pieces at one art fair. That changes the story. When you go home to mom and say, hey, mom, I sold 80 pieces of art, and these are not cheap pieces. These are 40, 50, 80, 90 dollars. Suddenly, arts becomes a real career path. 
And I've been through this, right? I've been a kid with a passion. I'll never forget my mom sitting there going, really? You're going to be a DJ? Uh, yeah, how are you going to make <laughs> a living? Right? Yeah. Like, how's that going to work? Well, I, mean, I go through that with, yeah, my son, who's uh, he's graduated from high school this year. He's going to filmmaking school. So that's all he wants to do is make movies. So I am all for it. I'm sure. super excited and very, you know, I love that he's pursuing his passion. But there's definitely that, that mom that kicks in going, huh. Are you going to ever live, you know, outside of my house? Like, right. How is this going? And also just the concern of like, who's going to kind of help you along? Because it's great to have this passion and this drive and this creativity, but how do you make it practical to get out and make the right connections and network? And so the fact that they're building in this practical part of it is yeah. huge. Yeah. And that's what this Mint Artist Guild is all about, because I guess you can actually go from art show to art show, but, you know. And you see stuff. this in all across all genres of, of entertainment course, yeah. and arts, and that you have, you have the creative types, not the stereotype, but you have the creative types who may not have the best business sense, and right. the more rigid business people aren't the creative types, the whole left brain, right brain thing. So mm-hmm. giving these people who are tremendous artists just a little bit of that foundation to figure out how to make a career and a career out of it I think is phenomenal yeah and that's something we've talked about in this podcast quite a bit is can you make a living here as an artist is it possible how Correct. does that compare to other cities uh, and so that was one of the questions I, I put to mark is you know can you make a career out of this mm-hmm. so many people believe oh I can become an NBA superstar and make my living well no there's far more people making living as artists than there are in the sports fields. Plus, it's so easy to convert those art skills into other things. One of the largest companies that hires artists is GM. The organization in this country that hires more artists than any other is the United States government. So design, art, uh, they're real close together. And we're trying to make sure that people the young people can visualize a path to a career in the arts before they end up having to make a decision based on $100,000 in college debt or something like that. It's much, much easier to decide that you're going to be an art fair artist when you don't have debt than when you've just graduated college, you have the degree, you have the skill, but you have to worry about paying back the debt. Yeah, Mom. GM isn't hiring basketball players. Right. (laughs) That's something you wouldn't have thought of, though, where it's like the U.S. government hires artists, whether it's design. You know, if you're an art, if you're an artist, probably the last place you would think to work would be the government. True. But there's all these opportunities. Yeah. And it beats the traditional liberal arts, or in my case, communications major stereotype, where the first thing they teach you is how to say, would you like fries with that? Mm-hmm. You are pretty good at that. I, that's where I'm headed, the way I'm going. So that's not all that they have uh, over at the Belle Isle Art Fair. They also have this thing called the Heritage Tent. Okay. And here's what that's all about. We just started last year. We call our Heritage Tent. And the Heritage Tent is for some of the best iconic Detroit artists that used to do art fairs, but because of their age or infirmities, they can't really go out there, set up tents, and carry thousands of pounds of clay, for example. So we set up a tent that they share with other heritage artists. Uh, We have people there to help them so that even artists in their 80s are able to get out there and still make a living in their field. I think that's pretty cool, actually. That's really cool. I never really thought about it like that, that, you know... They're going to need some assistance, not yet, but, not. but the creativity and what they're making is still I've great. S- I've seen it. I've seen some of you know people who are in these, uh, frankly, these careers that are just very hard on your body. Oh, definitely. And, you know, very and physical. and when you get older, I mean, I got family members that are in careers like that, and you know, you mm-hmm. slow down. Can you still do it? I think it's great that they make it so that uh, artists can still yeah, do absolutely. it. Absolutely, and it benefits everybody. You want that that whatever they've got to offer out there. Yeah. So uh, final question I asked Mark uh, to tell me about an artist that he's particularly excited about. And here's who he told me about. Alana St. Laurent is a photographer who years ago had been doing some of the same shots of ruins that a lot of the other people in Detroit were doing, but recognized that the beauty was more interesting in some of the other areas. So she took some amazing shots on Belle Isle. One of the fountain that we've been using since the beginning is kind of our signature look at the show. It's just got the beautiful sky and the background with the purples and the blues and the fountain. And her work, I'm just so impressed with the way that she's adapted. She's switched away from that 
rugged view that uh, so many people were using for years and so many of the other photographers are still stuck in and she's finding new ways to reimagine the city you kind of get the sense he was dancing around the world the words ruin, ruin porn, porn. yeah <laughs> just walked right up to that line yeah. and right. stopped but, but we all know what he means <laughs> but it's good to see that you know even the artists are are moving beyond that at uh, this it point. is good because i feel like it started to become a dime a dozen yeah, that type. yeah. Uh, all right if you want to check out the bell isle art fair it is happening august 4th and 5th you can find all the details at bell isle art uh, up next the world's largest bounce house is coming to town yeah buddy <laughs> we'll give you all the Whoop. details Welcome to the D. Free D. D. Free. Funny stuff. All right, Jag, let's talk about the comedy that's coming to town. So Friday, Paul Reiser coming to the Royal Oak Music Theater. And I got to say, I didn't really watch Mad About You when it was out. Oh. But my wife, Ellen, did. And, like, lately we've been kind of sitting around and she'll be like, you know, oh, that reminds, this just, the situation where it reminds me of this oh, episode this. of Mad About You. We'll pull it up on YouTube. I'm like, this is a really funny we show. We watch that religiously. I love that show. So if you want to go see him, we'll be at Royal Oak Music Theater on Friday night. He wrote a great book about fatherhood, too, that's just hilarious. I've heard of that. I can't think of the name of it. I've heard of that book. Yes. I think it's called like Father. <laughs> they, they, that's probably why I've heard of it. <laughs> yeah. uh, other shows this weekend, Mark Ridley's Comedy Castle has Matt Holt. Yeah, he's a good guy. He uh, uh, moved here from Indianapolis uh, not too long ago mm-hmm. and is doing that's comedy cool. here. Moved here for a girl, I believe, uh, is what I've read. W- quite possibly. Uh, that I, happens. I actually saw I've done, him. I did. That's why I came, part of the reason I came back. <laughs> I saw him, I think, open for Dave Landau on Valentine's Day. Okay. And Matt Holt has this joke uh, about, I don't want to give too much away, but it involves the word <clears throat> whistles, where <clears throat> is a part of the female anatomy. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, uh, he a, part actually, of, a part our president is fond of. Yes. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I'm fond of it too. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, <laughs> now that we got that out of the way. But but anyway, uh, he sells T-shirts after his show that says Matt Holt and the <clears throat> Whistles. Really? Ah. Well, you know we were okay. You know Maybe we could team we, up we, with we, like the the local animal shelter for cats. You know <laughs> that would work. And and anyway, uh, we we buy my girlfriend uh, one of these T-shirts. You, you Why? Did? She wanted to. There were it was Valentine's Day. We were a couple drinks in. We bought the, <laughs> we bought the T-shirt. Has she worn the T-shirt oh, ever? She wears it all the. Does she? Flipping time in public. In public? It, oh my God. Yes. What? <laughs> she wears my, She does. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, that's okay. that's, <laughs> that's I, Matt Holt. All right. <laughs> well, if you want if you want said shirt for your girlfriend, the, Matt Holt will be at Mark Ridley's it Comedy Castle. Perfect this weekend. Valentine's yeah, it's Day. It's very, gift. very popular. What month are we in July? Maybe you can get it as a Labor Day gift. I don't yeah. know. Hmm. Actually there's a joke in there somewhere, but I won't make oh, it. Oh no, stop. <laughs> Uh, also this weekend Ann Arbor Comedy Showcase has Mark Sweeney he's done shows on HBO and Comedy Central uh, Punchline Comedy Lounge itself it has Michael Collier uh, the Holly Hotel has Keith Bergman and Big Tommy's in Novi has Jeff Dwoskin who's kind of like this entrepreneur of all sorts um, and some good news Seth your favorite TV show right now The Good Place with Huntington Woods Kristen Bell just picked up for a third season I love this show oh, this cool. is the smartest comedy I've need to watch ever it. seen on television I still need to watch it uh, and if you are a fan of this also check out the podcast they do a podcast that's kind of a behind the scenes you just like, like the show because they have a podcast no I, I, I think the show is you know what I study political philosophy in college and that's very much what this is about Seth uh, doesn't mention this a lot but he Ivy League Brown University. Oh, yeah, well, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, and, Political. Yeah. And look, this show made a John Rawls joke at one point. And John Rawls is a big political theorist, wrote a theory of justice. I studied him. I mean, I took an entire semester course on just one of his books. And The Good Place actually made a John Rawls joke. And and I That's could legit. not believe it when I started. Legit. I was like, never heard that name in my life. While you were studying <laughs> John Rawls, amazing. I was studying Bob Costas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was amazing. So, yes, if you haven't checked it out, please. Smart and funny. Yeah, check out The Good Place. Too smart for me. The Deep Brave. 
All right, Becky, let's talk about what's going on on stages and other events around town. Sure, of course. Summertime, there's so much going on. We've got the 6th Annual Sidewalk Festival this Friday and Saturday, August 3rd and 4th. It's an independent community arts street festival. Um, It's a little hard to explain. So it's visual, cultural, performing arts, live music, dance, theater, installation art, a lot of which is interactive and you kind of walk through and do things with, um, land art. Of course, there's going to be good food. So the kind of point of it is that there's interactive work in unique spaces. So there's not booths or stages in the traditional sense, but rather it's the alleys, the community gardens, storefronts, and of course, it's the sidewalk festival, so on the sidewalk. So it's the Sears theme to it is source to future, how the sources in our world determine our future. So every artist that contributed to the festival was asked to kind of follow this theme. Okay. It takes place in the artist village, which is located on Lasser Road between Grand River and Orchard Street in Detroit. So again, it's tough to explain. You need to just go and experience it. It's very unique and fun. Uh, also this weekend starts the 12th annual Trinity International Film Festival, and it goes all the way through the 12th uh, at the Marlene Bull Theater at the Downtown YMCA, as well as the Car Center Gallery. And the grand finale of the festival takes place at the Garden Theater there in Midtown on Woodward. This year's theme is film, music, and fashion. So it's an independent filmmakers uh, festival. Film screenings, conversations with experts. Check that out. We'll have the link on our website. The world's largest bounce house is coming. All right. Tell me more. Stephens Park in Fraser. I have not been to this park, but it's the Big Bounce America's 2018 tour. <laughs> so this huge bounce house goes all around the country on tour and pops up in different locations for weekends. So it's this Friday, August 3rd through Sunday. This monstrosity holds the Guinness World Record. It's 100,000 square feet. Whoa. 32 feet tall. Includes an obstacle course. Wait, inside? It's all all one big blow-up thing that has obstacle course, basketball courts, giant inflatable beds, all these kind of things. I'm just oh, saying. Now, now you're talking. You got my, my imagination going. going. You know, in a bounce house, it's the motion giant, in the ocean. Yeah. Giant slide, ball I'm flip. five foot four. Normally, I don't play basketball, but if it were in a bounce house, you maybe. You could get some air. Maybe I could get some yeah. air. Yeah, and get this. So in the middle of this bounce thing, they built a stage for a DJ. So there'll be a professional DJ playing while all this is going Boy, it's on. a good thing it's digital, not actual records yeah, right. anymore. Well, I know. That it would <laughs> ruin their stash of records. So tickets start at just 10 bucks, and I think you get like an hour pass to bounce in this thing. So like adults can do this. It's not just for oh, kids. Oh yeah, they have different, I believe, different age groups. I'm old now. I can't times. bounce for a full hour anymore. But if you... but if You could slide if down you, the slide. If you land awkwardly, like you, it's it's air, like you're not going to hurt yeah. yourself. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I can bounce about five minutes these days. You know what? My uh, my wife's cousin has a nine-year-old. That is the perfect excuse for yes. me to go. Oh, I'm going to yeah. take her. Yeah. Go for it. Go for it. So Saturday August 4th, Bell Isle Circumnavigation Kayak Tour. So it's with Riverside Kayak Connection is the name of the company. You leave from the Bell Isle Kayak Beach on the east end of the island. You guys may have seen that. It's a little beach and there's a bunch of kayaks lined up and such. Mm-hmm. So you get 30 minutes in the beginning. They fit you up with the proper gear, talk safety. And then it's a two and a half to three hours of paddling time. You circle, just like it says, the whole island. It's about seven miles total. Wow. But you have to remember that half of that is upstream. Yeah, I'll bet so, that's a workout. Right. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you have to be, you know, in decent shape to do yeah. it. You need uh, some arms to do that. It's 18 I, years and up. Can um, I sit and have a beer while somebody paddles me around? You know, that would be ideal for me. So, okay. I don't know. Um, well, we can't put the perhaps, two of you in the same kayak. Yeah, we, if we We're looking see, at each other like, uh, uh, are, are you, you going to paddle? Are you, you going to paddle? Uh, yeah. yeah. So, only 50 bucks includes your kayak rental in the tour. Uh, theaters around town. Michigan Opera Theater, Wicked is coming August 8th through September 2nd. My wife loves that show. We may have to go oh, see that. Oh, my sister's seen it multiple, I've never multiple seen times. It. It's, it is good. It is good. Uh, Ringwald Theater in Ferndale, the Rocky Horror Show closes on August 6th. And Slipstream Theater Initiative in Ferndale, Lost in Three Pines, closes on August 5th. This is the D. Detroit. This is the D. Bring. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Another episode. All done. All tied up. Uh, Look, I want to say thank you to our guest. We've got Mark Loeb, who is the designer and organizer of the Belle Isle Art Fair. That's happening August 4th and 5th. Go check it out. Also, thanks to movie man Greg Russell for uh, checking in with us. I like that guy. Mm -hmm. Always love having him on. Yeah, so go check out his podcast as well. Uh, Plus, this Thursday, we've got musician, songwriter, and record producer Luis Resto. You guys are going to love meeting with him. I can't wait to ask him about winning the Oscar for Lose Yourself Mm -hmm. in 8 Mile. That's going to be cool. It's a great story. It's a great story. You can hear 
hear the whole story on Thursday. Don't forget, we've got a mobile app. You can download it. Uh, you can go to our website, thedebriefdetroit.com. While you're there, sign up for our email list, and we will send you a link to everything we talk about in these shows, because we talk about a lot. Mm-hmm. We know we cover a lot of ground. So uh, if you, you heard something, you're like, oh, I like that. I want to go. What, what, Wait, what happened? I don't know. Right. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Just sign up for the email. We'll send you all the details. Uh, and of course, you can get this podcast every single morning in Alexa. All you have to do is say, Alexa, enable the debrief podcast. Alexa, one more time now. Enable, Enable the, the debrief, debrief podcast. podcast. And you will have uh, our podcast in bite-sized chunks. It's like the candy bowl, but just get a little yeah, one each little day. Bit. Just enough to like scramble your eggs, make your coffee, get something up in the morning. You don't want to mm-hmm. do you know, the whole, whole thing. Show. So yeah. we spread it out over a couple of days. One cycle in my Ninja Coffee Bar. Yes. There you go. There you go. Uh, all right. Uh, let's start with you, Jag. Anything you want to plug this week? Yeah. So, Seth, you and I were at Podcast Movement in Philadelphia. Learned all about podcasts. And there is so much information that I want to be able to help and share. If you want to start a podcast... I will help you. If you have a podcast and you want me to edit it for you because you don't want to spend the time, your time is too valuable to do that, I can do that too. Check out my website, jagindetroit.com. And what about you, Becky? What do you want to plug? Sure. So uh, go to enjoythed.com for Feet on the Street tours. We've got a few uh, Eastern Market Come Hungry, Leave Happies on the schedule there. And then Murals tours are going to be right around the corner. Uh, street art tours uh, starting September 28th. So get those tickets now. All right. Thanks for listening to The Debrief. And we will talk to you on Thursday. The D Brave. Your guide to Detroit's arts and entertainment scene.